Ezekiel 33:21. And it came to pass the twelfth year of our captivity. All right. So don't go running over to Jeremiah. And find, well, you know, there's a contradiction. Jeremiah says the ninth year of our captivity means they've been in captivity for 12 years in Babylon. In the 10th month of the 5th day of the month. There's a date. And what's this date? That one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me saying, The city is smitten. <laughs> That's a very long time. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening, before he that was escaped came, before he came, before the messenger came, and I opened my mouth until, until he came to me in the morning, and my mouth was open, and I was no more done. Now remember when we went back, when we did beginning Ezekiel, God had a point, he says, you know what? You're dumb. And dumb in the Bible means you can't speak. The only way you're going to open your mouth is if I put something on your tongue for you to speak. Other than that, you're not speaking. You're not talking. So the word of the Lord came on to me saying, that's the only word that Ezekiel ever said. Then the word of the Lord came on to me saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak. That, that's, how, that's, what, that's the thorough job that Nebuchadnezzar and his army and the Chaldean is described and in uh, Nehemiah. It's waste. It's been destroyed. St. Abraham was one. And he inherited the land. God gave him the land. But we are many. And the land is given us for inheritance, but you said you sinned against God. You had other gods. You had other goddesses. You had other means of worship. You were murdering. You were giving your children over to uh, Molech. Wherefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, You eat with the blood. I think I think at the crucifixion of Jesus, I have to check it. I think while he's dying, I think it said there were some people eating. While the time of Jesus is on that cross and coming to the end, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, oh, you know, we gotta go have the Lord's Passover. Hurry up and get them down because you know our holiday's coming. Lift up your eyes towards your idols. That's one reason why you don't have the land. And shed blood, murder. And shall ye possess the land? You know that's America. We're gonna we're gonna have legalized abortion. We're gonna have legalized gambling. We are gonna allow businesses and people to corrupt and deceive others. We're gonna allow all these religions have freedom. And we expect God to bless us. God bless America. And then you get the American Christians. You know, they're rich. They're wonderful. They're great. Great church. Great pastor. We got all the paganism. I'm not going to say Christmas or Easter. And we're sinning against God. We don't give God the time allotted to God that we should. And we're, and, you know, God ought to be pleased we give him two days in a year or we give him a Sunday morning. And many go to church, they ain't got their Bible and they ain't got the right Bible. They're on their phones, they're playing video games. And they put a dollar in an offering box. And God's to give us a revival. God's to bless us. You stand upon your sword. You work in abomination, sodomites. You defile everyone his neighbor's wife, adultery. 
and shall ye possess the land? God's like, okay, let's just name your sins again. He's been naming them through Isaiah. He's been naming them through Jeremiah. He's been naming them through Ezekiel. Now it's come to, and, and you want my blessings? Friend, we are at America. We're at the Baptist churches today. The Catholic Baptist churches. We want nationalized re revival, but we don't want to give up our sins. We don't want to repent. We won't change our music. We won't stop, say this prayer. We won't give up an easy believism. We won't bring them to the gospel, but we'll bring them to the church. Say thou thus unto them, thus save the Lord God. As I live, there's God's eternal oath. <laughs> Surely they that are in waste in the land of Jerusalem, I feel this need for me, it shall fall by the sword. <coughs> and him that's in the open field, will I give to the beast to be devoured. So if you're in the city, the sword's coming. If you're out in the fields, the beasts are going to get you. And they that be in the forts and in the caves, um, bomb shelters, shall die of pestilence. We got in the world today, we got wars and battles all around us. We got animals. They just had a couple last week or a couple weeks ago, a surfer in California got bit by a shark and he just died. We've got animal, dog attacks. A girl was just mauled by a dog. You got bears coming out of the woods and swimming in people's pools. You got deers going inside stores and causing damage. And then the pestilence, do I need to mention COVID-19 and the variants thereof? And there are people, they have their bunkers. They got their plastic CBD, whatever you call it, bunker in the, in, in the ground. That ain't going to stop God. For I will lay the land most desolate. And the pomp, that's, you know, the royal show of somebody who doesn't mean nothing. The glamour. The red carpet. The limousines. The cameras flashing. All the security guards. All the police. And the motorcade. And the horse. And all that. Of her strange south seas. Israel has no more king. And there won't be a king to the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And when he comes with his palm, he's riding that white horse. He's got the sword. His enemies are being destroyed. And behind him is the church. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate. And none shall pass through. Then they shall know I am the Lord. There is that statement again. When I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abomination. What did it? Why are people dying of COVID-19? Why are there thousands and, and tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people have died of it? Because of your sins, because of your abomination. Which they commit. Thou, also thou son of man, the children of thy people, the Jews, are talking against thee by the walls, and in the doors of, of the houses, <laughs> your Baptist church, the gossip says. My wife, one time when we were at a church, she was doing nursery. And she said, you know, you, I said, I'm not going to tell you who did it, doing it. But, you know, the women are just down in the nursery. They're just gossiping, talking about others. And she said, I don't want to do, I don't, I don't want to do nursery no more. I'm sick and tired of it. And they were gossiping about us, too. And I told her, I said, you know, do you want to do nursing? She said, yeah, I want to do it. But I know 
I said, well, go up to the persons in, in charge of the, day, uh, the nursery and say, these people, I don't want to work with them. And you don't need to say, and if they question you, the people question, I said, tell them, you're gossiping. I don't want to be wrong. If only if I really have to do, I'll work with these people. I try to walk away from God. Because you can't forget what is said. This better, are you, I guess, no, I don't even want to hear it. Don't even go that far. And speak one to another. <laughs> it's carrying in, it's a telephone game. And every time you move to the next telephone, the, the story gets bigger and liar. And everyone to his brother. And that would be not his brother, you know, son of his father and mother, but that Jew. And the Baptist Church. Saying, come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from the Lord. So they don't mean it. They don't mean it at all. They had no for it. And they come unto thee, Ezekiel, as people coming. And they sit before thee as my people. They are his people, but God says, they're not my people. You know, there are people in churches, they may think they're Christians, you may think they're Christians, but they're not Christians. And the rapture will divide. They hear my words, but they will not do them. Is that the modern church today? Is that the modern Baptist? James says in 1.22, Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Verse 31. Verse 32 is an Old Testament, James 1.22. They hear them. How many people did Jesus tell, believe on the Father, believe on me. If you believe on me, you believe the Father and did not believe. How many people did the apostles go out? And those that got saved on the apostles throughout the book of Acts. How many went out there and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Believe on the gospel. How many rejected it? And how many sincere invitations in a church service? Right. To the point. For salvation. How many times has the pastor given a good message? And he's put for them to go and do. They hear. But they will not do them. And that phrase works for the lost. And for the saved. For with their mouth they show much love. I just love Jesus. I just love the truth. I just love, love. God is love. We love you. Oh, we just love you. Why don't you get right? Why don't you repent? Why don't you give that up? Why don't you do... No, 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 no. no. God is love. We just want to show our love. But their heart... Go with after their covetousness. Look at the sins. Murder. Idols. Adultery. Covetousness. They're breaking the Ten Commandments right there. And they're like, how come we don't get the land? How come we don't get blessings? What's God say to do? Oh, well, you know, I let my light shine. How many people you told about, I don't tell people, I let them see my life. Do they even know you're a Christian? Do your neighbors know you're a Christian on Sunday morning your car's not gone? There's a problem. There are the messages. And many are good and many are not. 
That's 50-50. And there are many saved and lost that will not do what the message was. And lo, thou art unto them, Ezekiel, this, this is what they think of you. You're a very lovely song. And one that has a pleasant voice. And he's complete opposite of Paul. Then he said, you know, he's contemptible and he's long winded. This ask Eutychus. So you can have that lovely song of voice. Or you can have that mean voice. There's no excuse. Ezekiel has that lovely toned voice. Which is what it said. That's what God said. The people are saying. He has a lovely voice like a song. And Paul has that mean, nasty voice. So it's not the voice. Their heart is not in it, though their ears heard it. And can play well on an instrument. I don't know if Ezekiel was playing an instrument. For they hear thy words, which is God's word. Because remember, he's been dumb to everything else. But they do them not. Can you imagine? Uh, let's look at the Christian for a moment. Can you imagine the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ? I don't know if we're going to be able to ask God. I don't think. I think it's going to be ashes or rewards. But here's the ashes. Well, what was that about? What about that one good message? And you were so quick to run out to the car and go whatever you did. How about you set in your heart, I'm going to do right. That meant I'm going to do right, and then Monday you forgot. And you didn't do nothing, ever. Or that revival meeting, and you got your heart right for two weeks, and then you quit. And then for a lost man, the great white throne judge, I know he'll be able to plead, because there's no time. Well, I never knew. All right, call up the street preacher, call up the gospel track, call up the, the, the hymn, call up whatever God used for that man to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The words. Well, you know, Christmas is the time. There it goes again. The music, the care. Not one of the carols I heard has been correct and right. We had one the other night we heard, and just totally wrong. I don't know what was the first Noel. That wrong, that song was wrong. Well, the carol. Over to town of Bethlehem, written by a Catholic priest. Oh, the holy lamb and kick Jesus between the teeth, as will perform the Christ Mass. Never mind, the Bible says, do not eat any blood. It's abomination to God. Will you take the body of Jesus? Merry Christmas, happy birthday, Jesus. We don't find it anywhere in the scriptures. The Catholic Baptist Church has made their own traditions like the, like the mean, nasty Catholics. Matter of fact, the traditions, a lot of them are the Catholics. Let's run to Malachi. We're not under the law, I'll remind you, but let's run to Malachi. And, you know, you, if you give all this money, the, the storehouses would be... We don't have storehouses. If your church has a storehouse, you are back in the Old Testament because the only storehouses were at the temple. The temple's gone. We're under grace. Paul said, hey, let any man give, out of, not out of necessary, not out of grudging, but what he wants to give to the Lord. And remind you, I do tithe and more. Okay? 
our preacher, he's so nice. He's got such a great message. He's got such a great voice. But is it the Word of God? Are you doing something that's not the Word of God, and when you he hear the Word of God, you're not doing it? How's that one? They hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. <laughs> Look at that statement by the Holy Spirit. They shall know that a prophet has been among them. Now let me say personally to myself. I hope they can say, but the Bible says many will go to Broadway. There'll be people at the farmer's market. One day they're going to know that big loud mouth loser who interrupted our business, who interrupted our labor. We had to hear that, and we couldn't stop him. We got the police, we got the law, we got the lawyers. We couldn't stop him. And there he is standing over with Jesus, telling him that he preached to us about that Jesus. And all we can say is, amen. I guess that preacher was right. Because there he is on Jesus' side, and here I go in the lake of fire. And I'm a prophet. Now, I'm not a prophet out of tea leaves, and I'm going to tell you who's going to be the president. No, a prophet is, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll go to heaven. That's a prophet. I can tell you about the tribulation. I can tell you about the rapture. I can tell you about things of the future according to... I'm a prophet. And there will be Christians at the judgment seat of Christ... Well, guess what? Our pastor is wrong. But that idiot over there we thought was an idiot that was in our church that we kicked out of our church. I guess he was the prophet. I guess he was the one that's right. Look at the crowns he's wearing, but he, I, I ain't got nothing. Pastor, you want to come over here and tell why he's got crowns and I don't? You want to tell me about the nonsense you taught us? I've been in church, and they're going, they're going to realize, you know what? They hated me. They disliked me. They kicked me out of their church. We're going to say, later on, yep, that guy was right. We heard the words of God, and we didn't do them. Wow.